guys and welcome back to the channel. My name is Grace if you're new here and this is the Rusty Thicket. While I get kind of situated into my watercolor paintings, I thought I would mention that that first clip in fact was a tsunami warning, like a real one. Um, we were fine here on Kadena, we're up high enough. We are actually an evacuation route for a lot of the locals. So we had quite a few more people on base than we are used to. But uh, everything ended up okay. There was um, a little bit of a, it was kind of back and forth really because initially they thought there was gonna be about three meters, which is significant, but nothing just truly insane. Um, and then it was quickly downgraded to a one meter and then we almost didn't see anything at all, apparently. Um, there were a couple of islands around that saw 23, 24 centimeters of increased um, I don't know, would you call that a swell? I'm not sure. But anyway, Taiwan had a very significant 7.3 or 4 initially, and then they bumped it up to a 7.7 .7 earthquake. And of course, you know, Taiwan is just essentially our neighbors here in Okinawa, so uh, it was very close to us. It was scary initially just because we've not actually been told what to do for you know, a tsunami. I mean, you know what to do. You get away from the coast, all that kind of thing. But, you know, I wasn't definitively told Kadena's high up enough and we're okay. But anyway, it ended up being just fine. A little chaotic day, stressful even, just because the energy, I guess. But they play the sirens like that over the big voice system and... Usually we only hear that on a Wednesday at noon when they're testing them, so hearing it after a little flurry of Facebook notifications was just a little exciting. <laughs> um, but it all turned out great, so I wanted to include that in this week's video because I didn't think that it fit in the lantern video from last week. Um, but this week we are painting a bunch of stuff. I have an event this Saturday, and then again, I have two in May, and that will be all that I'm doing during the hot months, June, July, August, and probably even September. I won't be doing anything. I just can barely handle the humidity and the heat here, and I wanna spend some time getting stuff ready for the fall because it's gonna be pretty much my last full season here, and uh, 2025 is gonna be spent prepping and preparing for us getting out because we will be leaving later on in that year, heading back to the States. Um, so I wanted to get a few things done before the summer and uh, I'm also now selling my stuff in the Kadena gift corner, which you may have seen on my social media. Um, I will show you a little clip of what my shelf looks like here in a little bit, but um, I was specifically requested to paint some more Sakura flowers for my metal bookmarks because I have a couple of requests for those. So I'm starting out with those here and I figured I would show you all in real time. It's kind of hard to see because they're so pale, but I promise they jump up off of the paper in real life. <laughs> Um, I thought I would ask and see what you all might be excited to see in the fall. I have this kind of wild hair idea that I would love to work on some cryptids. I think that would be a lot of fun, both in sticker and, you know, watercolor paintings. Um, I love fall. It is the time I come alive. Halloween is my favorite. I really like to lean into that aesthetic. I feel like it is essentially goblin core all its own so it would be kind of nice to really have the time to do that since i won't be doing events all summer long now i may pick up one here or there just depending if they're indoors at least if they're outside i'm kind of i'm just not made for it anymore i think i know my limits at this point um, since last year was my yes year and I was really just trying to know the best events to go to anyway, I think I've sort of honed in on that. I do still get some FOMO. I'm always worried that that one event is going to be the event and of course it would be the one that I'm not at. But I truly think at this point, you know, I could stand to drum up a little scarcity 
but also just give myself some extra time to do some longer form, longer term projects because it kind of gets lost behind the scenes of things when I am also having to stay on top of enough product to sell in person and stuff. So, of course, when I get back to the States, the plan is to work with um, more merchandisers and things that I can have prints made of and keychains and enamel pins and things, but I don't want to lose that handmadeness of stuff because I do enjoy these things. I'll just be able to do them at a slightly slower, more enjoyable pace because doing all my one-off items right now is just really overwhelming sometimes, but also... You know, I feel like I could plan and prep and do not necessarily better things, but just things that I feel like I don't have time for now because of the quickness in which I need to work on them. So it'll just be a nice change of pace, I think, to take the summer off before I get around to the fall stuff. So yeah, make sure you... Put in the comments down below what kind of stuff you might like to see coming up for the Halloween specifically season, but then obviously on into the holidays and stuff as well. My husband recently got put on four day work weeks. Um, this is the military, so who knows how long that's actually gonna end up lasting. Um, but the idea that he could start having an extra day off a week while exciting also makes me a little nervous because I do not like to work when he is home and, um, you know, I usually spend my Fridays recuperating from the rest of the week and getting housework done and stuff like that, so hopefully it won't change my schedule around too much, but I'm very happy to have him home. So that'll be a nice change of pace as well, especially going into the summer. Here is the little shelf I have at the Kadena Gift Corner. It is a place where they bring in um, a lot of like, especially since we're in the Asian Pacific and stuff, we get a lot of that kind of thing in. But they let you set up little shelves. Here I am walking Cooper. We have this park right across the uh, road from us. I'm sure you guys have probably seen it in videos before, but it is starting to warm up, so I'm trying to get in as many walks, especially with him, as I can. This cute little caterpillar. Just taking a break in between those and the rest of my paintings that I'm going to do today. All of these are going to be turned into metal bookmarks. Um, I usually market them as bullet journal rulers because they have a really cool straight edge and a really cool like uh, scalped edge so that you can make cute little um, lines like divider lines for your planner but they work great as uh, bookmarks and even letter openers. I've heard somebody ask me if that would work, and I really think that it would. They're not super sharp, obviously, so it would kind of butcher the envelope, but if you're just looking for the mail on the inside, I don't think it would matter. Um, here I am taking my cute little jelly roll pen. It's one of my favorite things about my watercolors is adding the white afterwards. I loved working on these little fairy rings. I hope they do well. Um, these larger circles and ovals are for the pill pocket or pill holder things that I like to um, market as trinket holders. I also tell kids who like the designs that they can put their Skittles and stuff in there. Personally, I have to have ibuprofen because, you know, pushing 35 and I've got bad knees and all that great fun getting older stuff. I hope these read as fairy rings. I think they really do in person. The further I am away from them, the more abstract they look, but especially when you add the grass, I think it kind of pulls things together. 
And I love these little carrots. This is kind of my nod to uh, Stardew Valley right now. Um, I don't want to give out any spoilers, but um, Concerned Ape, if you guys play Stardew Valley, the the creator of Stardew is, his name's Concerned Ape, and he has added a ton of new stuff to his game, and I have been just itching to play, and I'm not getting to nearly as much as I would like since I've been so busy, but um, I just did my first year of spring in there, and they have carrots now. So, I was just kind of really enjoying that little bit of playthrough I was doing, and I thought it would be cute to do some, some carrots. Plus, my theme this year is Forgotten Garden, and I'm sure carrots would be in a Forgotten Garden, right? Other stuff is. I love how this lightning bug ends up turning out. I did not like the process initially. Also, this little crow, but just wait. Wait until you see this guy. I am obsessed with how my little pigeon turned out. I might have to keep it. I don't know. We're gonna we're gonna see how it goes because I'm obsessed with him. And all my little frogs turned out great this time. I've drawn this mouse before on a larger piece and I thought he would be cute on a little pill pocket. And sometimes I don't know if I'm painting moths or butterflies and I'm just winging it each time. But I think they all turn out good. This is supposed to be on like the bark of a tree kind of a thing. And later you'll see that I'll come in and add some white dots and stuff to kind of do some markings on it. The lightning bug really started to speak once I had the black background put in. I don't know if I got it on camera or not, but I did add some white to its legs so that those would show up later on too. Look at this pigeon. He does not get enough screen time. So I only did a few paintings this go around. I had quite a few left over from my last event because I made a bunch and I really wanted to get a, a lot of my smaller pieces done instead of prioritizing larger paintings. I say larger, these are like two and a half by three and a half. They're like, you know, playing card sized, but that's my favorite size to work in. But I really liked, uh, I had pre-drawn these out months ago and I had really liked these three. And I specifically found a frame that I thought would go really well with the, this one. Oh. Oh, we already passed it. This one here with a snail. You'll see it at the end. Very fast, of course, because this is a time lapse. I worked for two and a half days on these paintings. There's about 26 of the little ones and then a few more of the big ones. But yeah, so that's pretty much everything I got to this week. And I think I'll probably do a little outro here at the end. All right, and here are the finished products. So um, this was all filmed, painting wise was filmed on Tuesday and a little bit of Wednesday. And then last night I glued everything down. So most of these probably would be all right to go ahead and put resin on, but I just wanna make sure they have a good solid 24 hours. So I'll wait until this evening to resin them and then they'll have overnight for the, like this will get a doming resin. This one, these get, a UV resin in between the little glass bubble before it goes on here. And then my bees will also get some UV resin and uh, an extra dollop of glue Oop, here. An extra little dollop of glue on the back this morning. So these will be good to go and these will all be ready by this evening to put resin on them and then they'll be, I guess a solid 24 hours or so before um, they are totally cured and then I can add them to my wares for Saturday. So I did not get to the trays this time. If you guys have watched before, I usually paint those trays and do some kind of resin in them too, but this time around just didn't get to them. These were the more important pieces anyway. My my cheaper or uh, you know, more affordable items do go faster and I wanted to make sure I had plenty on hand. I'll have 
three more events until I've decided over the summer I'm just gonna take a chill pill and kind of regroup for the fall. It's just too hot here for me to do any of those. So yeah, that's what we'll be working on later. And I guess I'll see you guys next week. Bye guys. Thank you.